What's up everybody? I'm Mike with Sunny Slope Homestead. Uh, you know, I just got back from the Oki Expo in Pryor, Oklahoma. And during the Q&A section of that expo, someone asked the question of how do you get yourself uh, debt free and how do you get yourself uh, into the homestead and getting yourself land? And what I heard wasn't really satisfying to me. They were all great answers, but they just, it was the same thing I've kind of heard throughout pe people's videos and whatnots and it doesn't really give you a detailed plan of what you need to do if you want to get to this type of life uh, because it is possible it is possible trust me it's possible so you're going to hear things about live beneath your means save your money but what does that mean what does that mean and not just like we know what saving money means and we know what living beneath your means means but what does it mean to you what it means to me is well, living beneath your means is getting to a point where you're comfortable in life where you can start putting away money or you could start doing things differently and it doesn't affect your way of life. A lot of people will say living beneath your means may be like not having cable TV, not doing eating out all the time. I mean, all that stuff, that all is living beneath your means, but you don't have to starve. You don't have to, you know go without because you only have one life to live and i'm not saying to go spend all your money but you there's no reason to suffer so that's one thing about living beneath your means and the other one is about saving so i'm going to hit two uh birds with one stone with this living beneath your means and saving your money and then i'm going to talk about what you can do to get into a situation where you can buy land and possibly a house and it's all about short-term goals. Now, I'm sorry to say this, but there is no quick fix to getting into the situation where you can buy land or get out of debt. Now, debt, it's not a bad thing. And let me tell you why. You're going to have different kinds of debt depending on what you do and how you spend your money. Now, having a carb note... That's not such a bad thing. Having a mortgage payment is not a bad thing. You want to stay away from uh, revolving credit, uh, like credit cards and gas cards. I mean, that kind of stuff. You want to stay away from that stuff. And the only problem is, is some people in their life, they've got no choice but to live that way because they've gotten themselves in a situation they can't get out of. So getting out of that debt with credit cards is... It's easier said than done, but there is a plan and there is a way. And then we'll get back to living beneath your means and how that pertains to where I'm going at with this whole thing as a conclusion. So what you can do if you have a lot of credit cards that are open and you're paying your minimum balance or your minimum payment on those credit cards, man, that's what they want you to do. They want you to make those minimum payments so they can drag out that loan as long as they possibly can and they can get that interest off of you. This is what you're gonna do to get out of that. Oh, I want 150,000. What the hell you doing? Man, you know how much money you can get for a slip and fall in a stove? What you're gonna do is you're gonna consolidate that debt. Now, you guys have probably have heard about this, but you gotta be careful and where you consolidate it because you don't want to wind up getting a higher interest rate or getting yourself into a situation where you even accure more debt because you consolidate it. Now, what I mean by that is you go to a bank. Me personally, I would advise you to go to a credit union because they're going to have the best interest rates. Um, don't let them loan you more money than you need. So you only get a loan for the money that you need that you have to owe these credit cards so consolidating all your credit cards and then getting a loan for that amount and then pay those credit card companies off be done with it because all that interest and all that credit card debt man it is going to add up to a tremendous amount of money that they're going to make off of you you're thinking why would i go get a loan to pay off loans well it's easy so you have all those interest rates and all those different bills that you're paying. And what you do is you consolidate it into one bill 
And then we'll just say like all those credit card payments add up to 500 bucks. You consolidate that debt, you go get a loan from a credit union at a decent interest rate. I, I can't tell you what decent's gonna be because it all depends on your credit score. Um, and then you're making a payment on a consolidated debt that could be like 250 bucks. So you went from paying $500 a month in credit card debt, and now you're paying $250 a month in a consolidated loan. That's why I say don't let them loan you any more money than what you actually need to pay off your debt. That is, a, that is my, um, my suggestion to you to get out of credit card debt if you found yourself in that hole. Now, the other thing, uh, living beneath your means. Now that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And like I said, it doesn't mean you have to starve or go without. It means that you have to find uh, a spot in your life that you're comfortable, your standard of living you are comfortable with does not uh, exceed or go below what you're making or what you want out of this life. If you're, uh, if you're living beneath your means, means that you, you stop watching TV and you cut the you cut the cable bill off and you save uh, this much money, then that's what it means. If it means that you don't go out and get the latest and greatest iPhone every year that it comes out, that's what it means. Um, you know, if it means that when you go out to uh, eat, a bird just pooped and barely missed the camera. I digress, but man, that was close. Uh, that means when you go out to eat, instead of getting soda or beer, you get water. I know that that is really weird to think of that because uh, that, that that's how minute you can get this living beneath your means. And it's weird to say that, but believe it or not, uh, if you get water, you're not going to miss that soda or whatever that you got with your meal. And it's funny because you do not understand how much money you save by getting water. Restaurants, they make their money off of like uh, soft drinks. If you ever look at that bill, they, put, they charge you like $3.50 $3 for that soda. I mean, that's what I mean by living beneath your means. Now, you're, you're still getting to go out to eat, but uh, you're, and you're still getting to live with comfortably, and you're still not going without. Um, that, that is like a very uh, mild sense of living beneath your means. You can actually tone that down and say, well, I'm not going to go out this many times this month, or I'm not going to go out at all. It all depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, but the, the best piece of advice I can give you for living beneath your means is, well, whenever you get that raise at the end of the year and your evaluation or you get that new job, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take that extra money that you are earning and you're going to have to decide how much of that extra money do you really need. If you can afford to take all that extra money that you uh, you got with that raise or that new position, then so be it. You're gonna save that money. Whether that means you put it in a 401k, a Roth, or just a savings account, you're gonna take that percentage and you're gonna sock it away. And the reason why you're gonna do this is because, first of all, you were living just fine. And that's, this, this means people uh, who are doing decent without raises i'm not talking about anybody who's in a bad situation you were doing just fine before you got that big promotion before you got that raise and every little bit counts so if you got a one percent wet raise uh well one you probably should look for a different job <laughs> or two um you you're you're gonna you're gonna take that little bit of that money and you're gonna put it away because it doesn't seem like much but you're never gonna miss it trust me you're never gonna miss it I haven't given myself a raise in a long time. I have had wage increments um, through the last five years and all that money has been put towards retirement or paying off debt. You want a homestead. I don't know how much money you make. I don't know how much money you've saved up, but you know that you want a homestead and you want to be able to afford a piece of land, but you, know, you don't really know how to get it without saving a ton of money over a long period of time. Things I could tell you right off the bat, well, I know that you have to set expectations and you have to make goals and set goals. That's gonna take discipline. 
like I said, this is not something you're all gonna wanna hear because there's no quick fix or quick answer to getting where you need to be to own property. But it is, it is possible. There's a million ways you can go about it. Say short term, say you don't wanna save for 20 years or maybe you don't have 20 years to, uh, to deal with all that. You wanna get it right now because that's America, right? They want it right now. Well, what you need to do is set a short term goals. What do you have that you can use collateral to put down on land because financing land it's not that easy you have to have a big bankroll um a good chunk of money should i say to put down because financing dirt is really hard to do well what could i use as collateral you say well for instance if you got a new vehicle because most people have to have new vehicles nowadays well that's your that's your goal paying that vehicle off why you want to pay that vehicle off is because it's going to be a short-term goal because it could be and when I mean short term, I mean four, five years. Yeah, believe it or not, that is short term when you're talking about owning a property like the one I have here. Well, where am I getting at with the vehicle? You can use that as collateral. The minute you have that paid off, that's something that is tangible, that has value. You can take that to the bank with your car title and say, I wanna use this as collateral on a piece of land or whatever you wanna do. Well, then basically you have financed that piece of land you have your car as collateral but you're going to live beneath your means by not getting a new car for the next you know three or four years because basically what you're doing is you're you're refinancing your car and using that money to go buy land is that a horrible thing to do not really it all depends on how disciplined you are and what situation you're in that will uh you know dictate whether or not you should do that or not if you're wanting it right now that's an easy way of going about it. Now, that's just land and dirt. And then you can do your shed to house and you can do you know, your small improvements um, as you financially can afford to do so. Do you, I'm guessing you guys don't ever get to eat your feed because these birds are constantly on it. You guys are constantly ch chasing around these yard minions to get away from your food, huh? You're gonna come over here and you're gonna start eating my pants, aren't you? Yep. Stop. Stop eating my pants. <laughs> so what i did this plan this property it took me from the day i decided it i wanted to do this i want to live this life that was 2013. i moved in my property 2017 around there that's a short amount of time right Wow, you really accelerated that. You got that property pretty quick. Well, it was pretty quick because I really, really, really busted my butt to get here. And what I did is every raise that I got, I put into savings. So before I started down this path of getting out of my comfort zone with my job, because that's one thing you got to do. If you want to, uh, you want to get things faster, you have to elevate yourself in a position where you can earn more and i'm not talking about go get million dollar jobs and making six figures and all that stuff i'm just talking little increments whether it be you're uh, some kind of a lead at your work and you finally get out your comfort zone and you take that uh, supervisor position or you're a supervisor and you just really ha didn't have the confidence to take the next step to be a manager those are the things you've got to do if you want to you know get the things you want in life quicker because you can't take it with you and this life it moves really fast if you can relate to this and it might help you out i'm going to tell it so i lived punching the clock uh it's like 2012 and i'm thinking to myself I'm like man i want i want to do something different i want more and i'm at the top of my earning potential in the job that i was in at that time so you know what i decided if i was going to do that i either had to change my job or stay with the company i was at and take on more responsibility well i became a supervisor a maintenance supervisor which that really gave me a huge bump in pay well you know the more money you make the more money you spend that's the downside. uh i didn't know what i wanted to do until about a year later and then i realized that well Maybe I need to start saving up a little bit of this money to get me where I want to go. So what did I do? I spent that first year making this really good wage 
uh and and i didn't really have anything to show for it except for you know buying toys and trying to keep up with the joneses i was not living beneath my means i try not to do the the more money you make the more money you spend because that is an evil evil uh cycle and also i got away from credit oh credit is a dangerous thing people because credit cards they'll get you out of a situation if you have to be you know get out of a situation but man it doesn't really do anything but set you back paycheck advanced places that's even worse you might as well just sign every paycheck to a paycheck advanced place sometimes you got to do it to pay the rent and keep the lights on i get it i'm not down talking it but man last resort last resort and you're robbing peter to pay paul with that one like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here 